We're live. Ooh, this is so exciting. I decided because I haven't had an opportunity to go out places to get dressed up, put makeup on, and I am so excited to be here with you on the Sunday evening. So give me one minute. I just want to make sure it's actually streaming. Oh, here we go. Perfect. So we are good to go. And I am just so excited to be able to share with you cycle syncing. And I wanted to talk to you briefly before I got started about why it's so um, important for me and why I wish like we were taught about this in school and how I think if every female understood this about themselves, um, there would be a lot more ease and flow. And specifically if you happen to be in charge of your own schedule or anything like that, it's really beneficial um, because you get to really create your schedule for what benefits you. And um, you get to use every phase of your cycle and view it as a superpower. And when I found out about this from a midwife about three years ago, I was just like, oh my goodness, how do we not know about this? And it's really transformed the relationship I have with myself. Um, I have way more grace and compassion um, for where I am in my emotions and my energy. And then I have way more grace and compassion for female friends of mine as well. Um, and so I'm so excited to get into this. This is the first time I'm presenting about this topic. So if there's anything unclear, um, if there's anything unclear about uh anything I'm talking about, please leave me a comment and say, like, can you clarify? Um, even if you're watching this after I'm live, um, comment or send me a message. I would love to be able to just make sure that this is as cohesive and clear as possible. So let's start rocking and rolling. So what I want to do is... Um, what I want to do is we are going to talk about hmm. there we go. <laughs> Just a little bit of technical stuff here. So we're going to talk about oh hi. I don't quite know. Sorry, that I'm using a different program. So let's see. Um, hi, Diana. So we're gonna talk about cycle syncing. Um, it really is a conversation. So definitely like converse with me, leave me comments below um, and let's rock and roll. So what I'm going to do is, we're gonna talk about cycle syncing and how it can benefit you. So I firmly believe the more we understand how our bodies work and what is empowering, uh, the more our bodies work and what is happening, we can empower ourselves to honor the ebb and flow of our energy and the different ways we can actually use each phase as a superpower rather than resisting it. Also, comment below if this is kind of like the first time you've heard about cycle syncing, if it's the first time, um, or if you're familiar with it, comment below what your like knowledge and extent of this is. Okay, so cycle syncing really allows us to flourish in all phases of our cycle. So, hey, Anastasia. So you might be like me when I first heard about this three years ago from a midwife. And um, what I didn't know was that the vast majority of how the world schedules and plans is based on the male's hormone cycle. So the male's horm hormonal cycle is a 24 hour cycle. So it's um, 24 hours and they're, I always forget how to pronounce it. Um, it starts high and then it usually ebbs at the end of the day. So that's the male hormone. So it resets every 24 hours. But if you think about it as females, we reset every 28 to 38, 28 to 30 days, give or take where you're at with your cycle. So imagine if you're scheduling your entire life on a male hormonal cycle, um, it's not going to flush with like how we are as women and how our ebbs and flows are. So when I first heard about that, I was like, mind blowing. 
So the typical hormonal cycle for women is 28 to 30 days, roughly give or take. There's always some ebbs and flows. What I do want to talk about is um, if you are taking birth control or hormonal contraception, you won't experience the same type of phases as you would in a natural cycle, but you can still monitor how you feel during the month and make adjustments. And I wanted to comment here, if you're on birth control, your hormones won't fluctuate as much and you won't ovulate, but you can still practice cycle syncing by marking the day after the last day of your period as your spring cycle and then continuing from there. So it's super beneficial um, even if you are on birth control, but I just wanted to kind of put that caveat in at the beginning. Okay. Cycle syncing allows you to know the different phases of your hormones and how they affect your moods, energy, and so much more. So um, comment below. Let's have a conversation. I'm sure you notice like sometimes of uh, during the month, you're more energetic, you're more talkative. Sometimes of the month, you want to just kind of be by yourself. Um, you know, I know I noticed that. And the more I've had conversations with people, I know they talk about it the same. So what I really wanted to talk about was the four different phases and seasons of your cycle. So usually how they're talked about is these four seasons. Um... So you have the winter, you have the spring, you have the summer, and you have the fall, okay? So um, the winter lines up with your menstruation. So this is when you have your period. And then the spring, the, the spring and the follicular line up about seven days after. So if you kind of break in your cycle in four seven day increments. That's just kind of like the easier way to view it. And again, everybody's cycle is very different, but usually it's like in seven day increments. So the seven days after your period, so your period of day one through seven, spring, the follicular is 14, seven to 14, the summer and your ovulation, um, which is where you can get pregnant is seven days after that. And then the fall, the luteal phase, this is seven days after that. Okay, so I'm going to break it down for you, but that's just kind of how um, it's usually talked about is the four, the four cycles and the four seasons. Any questions about that so far? Um, I can't see comments unless I go on my phone. So if I look down, that's what's happening. Um, yeah, so we have the four seasons, okay? Okay. So the main hormones that affect your cycle are estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone, okay? But it's mainly estrogen and progesterone, and we're going to talk about how that affects your moods and how it affects your energy and all that great stuff, okay? So this is just kind of a chart um, where you can kind of see. So this chart here is... This chart here is your estrogen. So if you think about it in those week cycles, like I talked about, your estrogen, this is your winter phase, which is when you have your period. So that's kind of usually when it's at the lowest, then it increases and then it suddenly drops, um, slightly increases and then drops again. And then your progesterone kind of remains pretty uh, minimal and it increases in the latter half of the month. And this is usually when it's associated with kind of like PMS um, symptoms and stuff like that. So just kind of a visual I wanted to include. And this is another great visual. So if you think about it as like a cyclical thing, um, you have the winter, which is your period, which is the time to rejuvenate. You have the spring, which is the time to create. You have the summer, which is the time to, um, it's like love. And you have autumn, which is the time to produce. And what's amazing about this, and I love talking about this, is, you know, it's actually, and why? here's why I consider it a superpower, is how often do we in life actually get to like assess and reset our our life? You know, sometimes for people it's yearly, you know, when you have the New Year's 
Um, sometimes people quarterly, but really for women, our body has an incredible system of resetting monthly. And I think in our society today, it's kind of, um, shunned. Um, it's like, oh, like I have, you know, PMS symptoms and I'm feeling, you know, X, Y, or Z. Um, but it actually, like our body actually resets on a monthly basis. So it's really incredible that we have the opportunity every single month to reset to reset what feels good for us, to reset um, what's working in our lives and everything like this. And so uh, when I changed my context from, you know, oh, I feel pretty crappy, you know, one time of the month um, to actually being like, oh, wow, like I actually get to powerfully reset my life every month, it shifted everything. So here is where it gets juicy. Um, if you have any questions as we're going along, please leave them. So the menstruation um, period, which is described as winter, is day one through seven. Now, I was having my mastermind call with um, a bunch of um, girls that uh, I kind of facilitate this conversation with. And one of them said something really powerful today. She said, you know, I view my menstruation period as where I have my wisdom. Um, you know, your period is your wisdom. So I'm going to explain why. So during your week one, which is the winter cycle, estrogen starts out at its lowest point and begins a steady climb. And estrogen continues to rise throughout this cycle week. Um, and I wanna talk about the feelings. So here's how you typically will feel in your winter week. You're typically feeling drawn within. So you're typically more reflective. You spend more time by yourself. You really rejuvenate. Your physical energy will be pretty low. Um, you know, you might not be as energetic. You might want, not want to like go hang out with people. But here's what's really cool about this, this time period. So the communication between your right and your left hemispheres of your brain are super strong because the hormones are at the lowest which leads us to clear intuition and the ability to be more in tune with what's working and what's not working in our lives. So, you know, what's interesting is when we're on our period, I think, you know, we tend to be a little bit more irritable. But when I started shifting that context and viewed it in like, oh, like, I'm going to actually start sitting and thinking about like, is this working in my life? Okay, so the best way to embrace this phase is it's the perfect time to slow down, tune into how you're feeling, store energy for the next phase of your cycle. It's time to let go of what's not serving you. It's time to rest. So this is the time where you like you don't need to be super productive um, and like, you know, have a bajillion things on your schedule. Um, and it's time to reflect, set your intentions and goals and evaluate where you're going. And this is really incredible because um, I firmly believe, you know, in the 80-20 principle in life. So, you know, if you're anything like me, you tend to start, you know, accumulating more and more things that you're doing, more things that you want to take on. And so this phase is really an incredible time to get in tune with what actually matters most and reduce a lot of stuff you've taken on um, just for the sake of taking it on. And it's really incredible because this is the time the hormones are the lowest and you really are in tune with what feels good and what doesn't feel good. This is sometimes when like some relationships be, be more irritable for you. It's usually because you're more sensitive to, to that. Um, and it's a great time to actually think and be like, why is this relationship irritating me? Why is this thing bothering me? Right? Um, and then the superpower of this phase. So the superpower of this phase is increased levels of creativity and flow state. So you typically can um, are far more creative and you have increased levels of intuition. Okay, so that's the first phase, the winter phase. Any questions about that phase there? So that's the winter phase. That's the phase traditionally that you will have your period. Okay. And then you have the follicular phase, which is spring. And this is um, days eight to 13, okay? This is the phase where it's typically, you know, talked about where you can grow, expand, and kick butt. And here's why. So your estrogen levels are continuing to rise and your energy level and your mental alertness will as well. 
So you'll find that um, as you move out of your, your winter phase into your spring phase, sometimes it blends together. So there's not usually clear delineation. Um, usually it blends together. But as you transition into the, your spring phase, you're going to find that your energy level is high, your mental alertness is high, um, and you know your mood is also increased in this phase. So here's how you typically will be feeling. Your brain is sharp. Your problem solving skills are easier. You're feeling super social and love mingling with people. You have a higher level of clarity. You're optimistic. You have fresh motivation. You're more sure of yourself. So that's like really great. This is the best way to embrace it. So this is the time that you want to try new activities. You want to create new goals. You want to plan more of your socialization and networking time. Um, and you can start implementing the plans that you've created in your winter phase. And the superpower of this is like you're outgoing, you're energetic, you have clarity. This is the time when like if you're like me, I'll schedule more calls. I will have more ideas come to me. Um, I'll be like, oh, I should try this. And oh, how about this? And like, oh, this sounds interesting. And, you know, that's and I and I'll embrace it as such. OK, so that's the superpower of that. Now, when you get into the summer phase. When you get into the summer phase, this is the peak phase of your cycle energetically. So this is the phase when you have way more energy um, and it's days 14 to 21. And uh, this is the time of your cycle when you feel most magnetic, social, and outgoing. So I don't know if you're like me. There's sometimes, and I knew this, but I didn't know this before I found out about it. But I felt like sooner than I heard it, I was like, that makes sense. There's some times of the month where I'm just like, I feel good. I, nothing could have changed, right? But I, I feel far more outgoing. I feel far more um, attractive. Um, things are just easier in that way. So this is the time of the month usually. Um, and so this is the feeling. The feelings you'll have are like increased alertness. Um, enhanced learning. Um, you're in the mood for love. This is also the time of the month that you can get pregnant. Um, so it's a really interesting time of the month for like nourishing things as well. Um, uh, and you'll be feeling more outgoing. Um, you'll have increased levels of confidence. How you can embrace this is your communication skills are usually the highest at this time of the month. So if you, if you think about like how you schedule your month, think about things that are really communication heavy. So, you know, if you do podcasts or if you have more meetings or, you know, whatever it is, this is the best time of the month to really schedule it because you're just going to feel more naturally in flow. Um, this is the time of the month where you can nurture and connect with your community. So this is a time where you want to schedule like get togethers with friends. You want to schedule parties. You want to schedule, you know, whatever it is. This is a time where you're naturally just going to feel your best about that. Um, and it's also a time where you'll just feel e more at ease, um, being visible and seen. So, um, that could apply to a lot of different things, right? So uh, the superpower in this is that this is the time to have difficult conversations you might have been avoiding, right? I know I personally found, you know, this is the time where I might have been avoiding conversation or a conversation might have been like, oh, I should probably have that. And when I have it in this time of the month, it just seems to flow a lot easier. I dread it less. Um, and this is the time, you know, to really embrace all the social aspect of life. Okay. And then we get into the luteal phase. So this is a phase where it's day 22 to 28. Um, and this is a season to reflect and release. And I really want to talk about this phase um, because I think it's so crucial because I think we tend to embrace like, you know, the spring and summer months because they're exciting. We feel great. Um, and, then we tend to kind of avoid the, the times in life where uh, we might not be feeling as energetic. But this phase, the luteal phase, is actually such a gift. And here's why. 
But first, actually, let's talk about why it affects your hormones. So this is the phase where your ratio of estrogen to progesterone makes you aware of details you previously might not have noticed. Progesterone levels tend to increase, which then starts the onset of PMS or, you know, symptoms like that. Um, progesterone is a sedating hormone. So if you tend to be more sensitive to it, this can all be... This can also be the cycle phase where you experience bouts of sadness or crying. And what's interesting is you in this phase, you actually have a lower tolerance of things that don't feel good or not or or are not in alignment with you. Okay. So here is why I like so firmly believe you should embrace um, this phase of the cycle. So this is the time you tend to be more productive. Um, you tend to be really focused on things, details. You'll be feeling like you want to get things done. Um, you'll, you'll, you know, you'll just be like, I want to clean the house. I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to do this. You're just want, you're in a phase of completion. It's like, let's get a bunch of things completed. Um, this is a great time to like clean and organize things in your house. Now, what's also interesting is you'll be feeling more easily triggered or extra sensitive. This is also a time of the month where you'll be far more critical of yourself and others. So the best way to embrace this, this is the perfect time to really implement those ideas and creative things you've been thinking about. It's the ideal time to clean and cleanse your space and your life. You'll be wanting to complete things in your life. Those projects or ideas that have been half completed, this is the perfect time to direct your energy into completing them or letting them go. Use this time when you may be feeling more critical of yourself to explore and observe curiosity and compassion. So if you're feeling like I never get anything done, I, you know, things never work out for me, I, you know, whatever it is that you're critical about yourself, this is the perfect time to actually approach it with curiosity um, and compassion and be like, okay, well, why, why do I feel like that? And really like observe and embrace that. It's also, I think, really important to know that it's okay not to be happy all the time. Um, you know, this is a, this is a time in your cycle where just hormonally, just like, like pure, scientifically, your hormones are lower. Um, so you're going to be more sensitive, right? So embrace this time with compassion and curiosity. And this of all the phases, self-care is super critical in this phase of life, right? In this phase of your cycle, super, super critical. I would schedule way more time in this phase than other phases to actually like nourish yourself. And that could look whatever way that you you feel nourished, bubble baths, long walks, some fresh air, um, you know, more time one-on-one -on -one with close friends, like whatever it is, this is a phase where it's really important to take um, care of yourself so you feel nourished. Now, the superpower behind this phase is it's a great time to be more detail-orientated, right, with tasks. So if you're self-employed, um, or you or you have to do a lot more detail focused. Um, this is a great time to do your taxes. This is a great time to like work through number based things because your brain just like operates better um, due to the hormones. Um, and it's a great time to use the curiosity and compassion to receive insights in your life for what's not working and what is working. It's a perfect time to shift back into alignment with yourself and what truly matters to you. So what's interesting about this phase is I, you know, on the mastermind today, again, we were talking about it and one of the girls said, yeah, you know, back, back in however long ago, they would actually, like the men in communities would actually come to women who were on their period um, and ask for wisdom and ask for their thoughts and opinions on things. Because when you're on your period, that's when you have a lot of wisdom. So it's just so interesting. So here, like, really is why your cycle is your superpower. I cannot, honestly, I cannot say this enough, is when you really dig into this, and I think I'm actually going to do another live on, like, how 
like what scheduling would actually look like? Like what's the nitty gritty? How would you schedule um, to fully embrace it in your life? Also, there's a whole other aspect to working out right? There's times in your cycle where HIIT workouts are better. There's times in your cycle where, you know, um, uh, just, you should just low impact if little exercise. So there's, your cycle also affects your, like how to optimize working out. There's times in your cycle where things eating wise will feel better for you. Um, so this is really just like a super, super, uh, 101 version of cycle thinking. Um, and I would just so encourage you to, uh, dig deeper into this because, um, I truly believe, you know, how they have the phase, like knowledge is power, right? Hold on. I'm going to see if I can hide this. Second so have conversation with you guys. You know how they have the phase, like knowledge is power. Um, I think that's the first that's the first piece of it, but I truly believe that implementation is power. So once you start implementing this, you're going to see shifts in your, um, in your life. You're going to see shifts on how you communicate with people. You know, uh, it's so interesting. One of the girls in the mastermind is like, yeah, I tell my boyfriend, my boyfriend knows, he just knows that like some weeks of the month, I just need time by myself right? And when you can actually communicate that, when do you know that like, hey, I just need to be by myself. I just need more alone time. It has nothing to do with you. It's just, that's what I need. It really helps also with relationships. And I think specifically with female friendships, this is a really empowering piece of knowledge to have because you may, um, you know, have a friend and you're like, Hey, let's meet up. And they may just not be in that cycle where meeting up feels good for them. Right. I think this has allowed me to have way more compassion for friends of mine when I'm just like, yeah, Oh, totally makes sense. Or if they're a little more sensitive to things, totally makes sense. Right. Um, so it really is a really incredible piece of information to actually truly implement into your life. So um, does anybody have any questions? Um, again, if you're watching this after I've been live, leave comments below, um, or send me a message because I would love to just hear what you got from this. Um, what opened up for you? What made a little bit more sense? Um, how do you think this could be helpful and beneficial in your life, in your business and, um, all that good stuff. So, uh, this has been fun. I think I'm going to do this again. I, um, I'm just so excited to be able to share this information because, uh, I started a mastermind four weeks ago and this was like the first piece of information that we went over in the mastermind. And it's like really shifted a lot of how the women are engaging in their life and engaging with themselves, which I think is like hugely important. Um, cause when you know this, I just, there's less resistance. And I think, you know, what I've really been discovering in my life recently is it's possible to create and accomplish what I want to in my life with ease and flow. And so this is just one tool that's been super beneficial for me to actually create my life in ease and flow, right? Because if there are certain times of the month where I will just naturally feel better uh, about talking with people, well, why not just go with that, right? So, uh, oh, I'm so glad. Um, yes, I was about to say, tell me, talk to me. Tell me what opened up, what what you, what like was your aha moment? Have you heard about this before? Um, talk to me. I'm essentially just sitting here chilling. So we'll have a one-way conversation. Well, type, let me know. I, um, like, what kind of, like what was kind of your aha moment in in kind of everything I've gone over? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. I intuitively felt like there's a way to work my with my hormones and not be run with them. Yes. Tell me more about that. Yeah, tell me more. Because I think, you know, 
because we don't know this, because our moms don't know this, because it's not talked about. Um, and like, I think in pop culture, you know, it's like, oh, they're on their, you know, period or, you know, are you PMSing again? It's like a very negative connotation. Um, it's really hard to naturally embrace your home, like the, 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 your ups and downs of your hormones. And it's such a gift right? Like if you just think like, oh, I'm going to be irritable, then you're not, you're obviously going to resist it. But if you're like, okay, this is the time where like things are going to be more irritating for me because I'm more in tune with what's not working in my life. So if things are more irritating to me, then I have an opportunity to actually look and see what would work, right? Um, it makes me wonder how I can implement this in my workday and midterm work plan. Yo, absolutely. Actually, would it be beneficial for me to do another live about what actually scheduling would look like? So I've kind of gone over like 101, but I actually think it would be a lot of fun to go over how to schedule, right? So I was thinking you take all the tasks that you have in... Um, in your work day, in your personal day, you take all those tasks and then you just map them out for the month of where they should go. I think that would be a lot of fun. Let me know if that would be something you'd be interested in, in joining me with. Um, my, uh, my feminine is my superpower, not something to make wrong. Yes, 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 yes. I, um, I, and I think this is like such a crucial conversation of, you know, let's embrace what makes things easier for us. Why resist it, right? You know, men and women are different and it's not a horrible opposing thing. Let's just actually embrace what works for us. Um, my schedule and calendar can be a reflection on my cycle. Absolutely. Like, um, yeah, I think let's do a let's do a cycle syncing and scheduling um, time because then we'll just take the month and look at everything you have going on and then you just slot it in depending on the energy level and what's required of that activity into the different weeks right? And then you try it for one month and you're like, oh, this worked, this didn't work, I'm going to adjust it. Um, I was also going to say, what else was I going to say? Um, doo -doo -doo. My schedule and calendar has something to do with my schedule and calendar can be a reflection of my cycle. Um, I don't remember. <laughs> um, any, any other questions? Was there something from what I went over that you're like, it wasn't fully clear um, or that you were more intrigued by? Talk to me. See, this is when I should have my glass of wine. However, I'm out of wine and I need to buy wine glasses. My birthday is on Wednesday. So I think I'm gonna buy wine glasses from a birthday present. Um, but yeah, was there anything that I went over that was a little fuzzy, unclear? Um, any other questions you had about kind of the cycle thinking 101? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And while I'm waiting, um, yeah, I was gonna go back to this comment of like, there is a way to have it all, yeah. There really is. Um, and I think when you learn to embrace all your emotions, because if you're anything like me, uh, I remember I went to a counselor four years ago and I went to the appointment and I was like, yo, I don't know how to be vulnerable, like at all. I have no idea. And after the counseling appointment, she turned to me and she said, Dominique, you know, sounds like you only have two emotions um, that you express anger or happiness. And she was like, and I want to tell you, there's a whole range of emotions in between. And I, that was about four years ago. And that shifted my entire life. I was like, Oh, 
you're right. There are a whole bunch of emotions in between. And so it really took me on a path of discovery of like how emotions work um, and how to embrace them all. And, you know, I used to feel extremely resistant to, and if I'm being a hundred percent honest, still do feel resistant to being like sad. I don't like that feeling. Um, but as I went on discovery, I was like, I can embrace everything that like the emotions mean, um, and use them as a, like a guidepost of like why I'm feeling the way I'm feeling. And so I think the same in cycle thinking is, is like, it's an amazing tool uh, to guide you on what's working in your life and how you're feeling. Cause you know, what's interesting is, and, um, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Do the happy anger dance as well. Yeah. Um, uh, I think that's gonna be another live. Literally, I think I'm gonna come on here once a week and we're just going to talk about emotions and vulnerability. And I, this is totally my jam. Um, and so, uh, yeah. And so I think when you, um, are able to look at your emotions with, um, with compassion and curiosity rather than resistance and frustration, um, your life just flows with a lot more ease, right? Um, because I previously thought I needed to be happy all the time, right? <laughs> Which is, you know, interesting now that I look at it as like, seems like a broken context to have that I need to be feeling happy all the time, right? Um, but I think when you can embrace your emotions um, and be curious about why why they're coming up and why they're showing up, you can um, you just have a lot more compassion. There's a lot less resistance in life. Uh, emotions equal energy and motion, aka they're just here to communicate things with us. Yes, a hundred, a hundred and ten percent. And, uh, and that's why I just think like cycle thinking is one of the greatest gifts. If you can just really embrace it where every month you have the ability to reset and reassess what's working and what's not working in your life. Think about it. Every month you have the ability to, um, to just really connect with yourself right? We don't need to wait until New Year's. We don't need to wait until we have the midlife crisis. Uh, we just intuitively every month reset. And every month we have a week where we're way more sensitive to things that are not working in our lives. Um, and uh, uh, we can be way more sensitive to things that are not working in our lives rather than having to wait, you know, for five years for a life crisis and be like, this is absolutely not working. Um, we every month can reset and, um, yeah, it's something we've been groomed to feel guilt and shame about. Yeah. I was literally before I, <laughs> before I came on here, I, I'm, I'm living with like my best friend since I was like eight years old. Um, and so before I came on here, I turned around and I was like, Oh my God, I literally cannot believe I'm doing a Facebook live on cycle syncing. Because this is a conversation, like, I grew up where this was not a conversation that we had in my family. We never talked about periods, like, ever. Um, I'm one of four girls, and we, like, even as girls, didn't talk about it. And so I, I actually don't think I openly started talking about it until probably eight months ago. Um, and now I'm just like... <laughs> Like, it's so funny because the guilt and shame that I had, I don't know, it just like poof disappeared. And I'm just like, it's a beautiful way for us to be in alignment with, with ourselves, with other people. Um, and why, why it's like, why are you putting another person's shoe on? So back to scheduling, just cause you know, back to scheduling and productivity is like, if you're scheduling according to <laughs> thanks, if you're scheduling according to how um, it's been done, which is a very male-dominated way of doing it, it's literally like you're putting on a wrong pair of shoes. 
And then you're walking around in a wrong pair of shoes for your entire life, wondering why your feet hurt, why it hurts to walk, why you're exhausted. Because if you're thinking about it, if you're wearing a wrong pair of shoes for 10 years, it's going to be super tiring to walk all the time, right? So it's like, why put on a wrong pair of shoes? Why don't you just actually find a pair of shoes that works for you? And so in regards to scheduling and productivity, scheduling according to a male dominated way due to their hormone cycle just doesn't make sense. You're putting on a wrong pair of shoes. Um, but when you can put on the right pair of shoes, you're walking is going to be a lot easier. You're going to actually enjoy walking. Wow, this is a great analogy. I actually hadn't thought about this analogy beforehand, but this is a great analogy. When you put on the right pair of shoes, walking becomes easier. You actually get to enjoy your walks. Um, you have, you know, things are a lot more ease and grace and flow. So same in your life. So we can all schedule with the right pair of shoes. I actually love this analogy. So yes, okay, perfect. Um, I will definitely let you, I might do a Facebook Live next week. We'll see about how to schedule according to, yes, right? <laughs> I think, I love that. Wrong shoe analogy with scheduling, 100%. I should trademark that analogy. Um, man, and I even haven't had any wine. So imagine uh, a Facebook Live where I've had wine. This would be so much fun. Um, but yeah, so... I will let you know, I think actually doing um, a live where we actually look at the nitty gritty of how you schedule in your week would be a lot of fun. Um, it never feels like it fits for long. Uh, yeah, resist scheduling. I do too. And so in cycle singing, what I found beneficial is I kind of view it as like weeks. Um, and... It was interesting because I actually felt a lot of guilt and shame because I was like some weeks I'd be like super amped and excited and some weeks I'd like be like, I don't want to do anything. And I was just like, I just need to work harder, right? I just need to work harder. I need to be more disciplined. I need to be more focused. I need to like be operating at like a flat line, right? And it brought a lot of guilt and shame for me because I was just like, I should be more disciplined. And um comment below if you feel that way as well, is like, I just need to be more disciplined. Why? You know, and what was interesting is the weeks where I was like super amped and excited, I almost felt even more guilt and shame around that because it was like, you can't sustain this. It's going to drop, right? You can't sustain this. You need to figure this out. Whereas like now I'm just like, okay, I get it. I get it. It's like, you know, this week of the month, I'm actually naturally going to um, be more excited. So why? So I'm just going to embrace it, right? Because I know two weeks from now, I probably won't. And that's totally okay. So you can just, and now it's more of like a dance. It's more like an ebb and flow of the ocean, right? Ebb and flow of the ocean. You can just dance with it rather than feeling like you need to operate on a very linear way. We don't need to operate in a linear way. That's also boring. So I've decided I don't need to operate on a linear way. I can embrace when I'm feeling super energetic and excited. Some weeks I'm going to want to work like 12 hour days. Some weeks I'm not going to want to work, right? And putting in two and three hour days works um, for me in my business. So uh, yeah, I'm all about embracing. Put First of all, put on the right pair of shoes. Set them all and embrace the ebb and flow. It's a dance, right? And we don't need to be linear. That's no fun. Okay, this was so much fun. I'm so glad that uh, you came and shared it with me. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hold on. I have no idea who's leaving comments. Um, yes, absolutely. I'm loving you all. <laughs> Azazi and Nasuja, I am loving you all. So I really created the Facebook group as a conversation. So what I would love is like, now that you know this, come into the Facebook group during the week and comment like how you're feeling or like, you know, something. I really want to create a really powerful community of women that support each other, right? Um, and when you're down, but that's why we're here right? 
Um, and so that's my, that's truly my goal of this Facebook community group is that we're a group of women that allow ourselves um, to show up in all the ebbs and flows and we get to extend grace to ourselves and we get to extend grace and love to um, those others. So definitely um, comment uh, in the Facebook group regularly. I love you all and I will let you know, I will definitely do the, the scheduling one. Um, probably next week. And that'll be so much fun. So until next time, I hope you guys all have a beautiful Sunday evening. I can go out for a walk and enjoy the beautiful evening. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye.